First Lutheran. Please share them with the ushers or drop a note in the offering plate or speak with me or any of our staff after worship. Just a couple of announcements concerning the life of the congregation. If you will notice on the back page of your big green announcement sheet, uh, it's called the Lenten Speaker Series, but we should just call it the Lenten Eating Series uh, because this is really about eating right now, So, because I didn't include the speakers. But we're looking for a group of people to host March 27th. So you can just call yourselves the March 27th host. Uh, if you want to know what uh, you want to share, um, we'd be happy to talk with you about that. But it's uh, 5.30 p.m., so if you could uh, place that on your schedule, that would be great to help host either 60 to 120 people for um, uh, Lenten dinner. Uh, next week is the annual meeting, so we really need your presence, especially in the season of calling a pastor. So we are going to be electing council leadership and uh, listening to the plans to go forward. So please return for the annual, or stay for the annual meeting. Uh, are there any other announcements uh, concerning the life of the congregation? Well, with that, let us turn our hearts and minds toward worship with the confession and forgiveness as printed on page two in your bulletin. Please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us and forms us, who redeems us and calls us, who unites us and sends us. Gathered in God's presence, let us confess our sin. Mighty and loving God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We seek our own way. We divide the body of Christ. In your mercy, cleanse us and heal us. Let the words of our mouths and the thoughts of our hearts and everything that we do be filled with faith, hope, and love. Amen. Hear the voice of Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim release to the captives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I proclaim to you that your sins are forgiven. You are released. The joy of the Lord is your strength, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are yours forever. Amen. Hey, there it is. Yes, children, journey of faith, come on up. We're going to sing a few songs today. All right, we're going to we're going to start this morning with a song we sang in the fall called "God Is So Good." The words are up on the screen, or will be very quickly. Right there they are. And it's pretty easy, so I will... We need to wiggle your fingers. Get yourself waking up. If you're not woke up today, I'm still waking up myself. So I'm going to tell God how good he is. He is very, very good. So it goes like this. And we'll sing it three times. God.
For this next song, the band has been working on a, a song for the season of Epiphany. Uh, it's called Here I Am to Worship. And we'd like to start out our worship here this morning. And if any of you know this song, please feel free, kids, young and old, to sing along with us.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, source of every blessing, you show forth your glory and led many to faith by the works of your Son, who brought gladness and salvation to his people. Transform us by the spirit of his love, that we may find our life together in him. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 62, verses 1 through 5. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, My delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. Word of God, word of life. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains. Your justice is like the great deep. You save the mankind and the animals, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God! All people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. The second reading is from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another by the faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the second chapter. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave up, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, 
each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to servants, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. Jesus said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it out. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it had came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves a good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. O oh God of steadfast love, that the wedding in Cana, your son Jesus, turned water into wine, delighting all who were there. Transform our hearts by your spirit, that we may use our very gifts to show forth the light of your love as one body in Christ. Amen. These verses in this Gospel of John ignites the cheering of venters, the vine growers, the wine makers, and the brow raising of, of abstainers. Maybe you've seen the bumper sticker, conserve water, drink more wine. This Gospel joins the whole of Scripture, returning again and again to wine, a gift of God. In the book of Genesis, Isaac blessed Jacob with the prayer that he will have plenty of grain and wine. The prophet Isaiah in chapter 25 speaks of a day when the mountains will drip with wine. People will delight in well-aged wine. Within the early church, in the book of Acts, spectators and hearers mock the power of Jesus at ministry on Pentecost. For those who witnessed that power were assured the believers were filled with new wine when speaking each other's languages. To the contrary though, wine did not flow as easily as we know in the scriptural witness, especially in that ancient world where the stories and messages that created the Bible took place. Wine then and now was a product for sale by vine growers. The peasant class collected the grapes for producing the wine. These poor drank little wine, mostly thirst quenching water, for Palestine, as then, as now, is a desert of exhausted wells, dry riverbeds, and crumbling streams. The diet of the needy consisted of cheese, bread, and olive oil, their feast with water to quench it. But saving and scrimping made wine and every delicacy possible for a wedding or a family celebration. Family and friends cash harsh judgments, as some still do today, when abundance is absent at a celebration and wine has been choked off rather than flowing freely. Our Gospel in John provokes this question. Does God really care about contributing to the hopes of our celebrations, of our feasts, like the wedding at Canaan? And the answer is affirmative. Yes, yes, and yes. God is far from our considering as a pleasure suppressor. Scripture, as people of the book of faith, is our witness, linking us to a God who affirms, participates, and adds more to our vastly important but limited pleasures than already was present. 
This gospel says yes to all the joys of humans, locally and globally, regardless of their particular situation. Our God is always more than the present joy or sadness we experience. We are enjoying the receiving, the granting, the offering of the gift of our lives here and now, for God is good and great all the time. All the time, God is good and great. This present life that we've been endowed with, fully respected by God, is not the end of our lives. God is not only married to our daily life, but also to our eternal life. For this moment in time is a sign, like the wedding feast at Canaan, where the gladness of God reveals, where the gladness of God reveals that any holy feast, like the one following our worship in the gathering space, those that take place in your homes or at parks, the recent first staff Lutheran party, first Lutheran staff party, excuse me, or that food tasting during the Martin Luther King Jr. commemoration at Black Hawk Technical College. All this eating and feasting are enticing promises of the banquet of heaven as seen in our Holy Communion. John invites us to see who is in charge of our public and private eating, of our daily feasts, but also who is in charge of the eternal feast of life. This gospel kind of hides that to us as John moves with Jesus back and forth from this time to back in time from this world to another, from one age to the next, from this present time to the eternal time. Jesus' mother tells the story, do whatever he tells you. These words are not only wise words from a mother, but also the watchword for us as Christians. Doing whatever Jesus calls, commands, and invites is the ground of our living as disciples, as followers of Christ. We as believers of Jesus the Christ live a life within a life. Nothing has changed. Yes, I am the third interim pastor at First Lutheran. New to me, same to you. But everything has changed. What has been is over. Water is wine. Word became flesh and dwells among us. What will be is. What seems to be is no more. This change, this transforming, <coughs> takes place at a wedding in Canaan, a globally common festive family event where the hidden glory of Jesus the Christ of God is revealed, calling our sin and waywardness to end to become heirs of God, children of God. The fulfilled time with Jesus is not already here, but is coming, even as we grasp and reach out for the plenty that this world produces as well as takes from us. As Jesus said to his mother, my hour has not come. Whether in joy or sadness, our hours, our minutes, our seconds, the nanosecond, are never in our control, whether together or apart. The hour is not in Jesus' control, for Jesus has the work of God to do by heeding the expectations and demands of God. The most important epiphany will be revealed to us in the hour that will come for Jesus on the cross. The power of God comes through Jesus, comes through our flesh too, and our spoken word. Like the promise made to Abraham and Sarah, 
Your descendants will be as numerous as the stars. Like the Ten Commandments, the Decalogue given to Moses. This is the first and old wineskins of the covenantal relationship with God. Jesus is now the new wine for our covenantal relationship. Though moment by moment we break this covenant by not keeping our word with each other, time after time, Sundays and Wednesdays, an hour on Sundays, 30 minutes on Wednesday evenings, we will drink from the cup of a renewed covenant of forgiveness offered by our Lord. For Jesus comes as the new wine son, God showering us with far more than we have ever received from God before. With the disciples, we can enjoy this and any ride, for our Lord accompanies us, not only by completing this interim, but also by entering in the fullness of time with us and for us. For God always rejoices with us, <coughs> entering into our time with joy overflowing as the beloved people of God, eating and drinking with Jesus. For this is the feast our Lord commanded. Amen. Our sermon hymn for this morning is printed in the bulletin, and please note that verse 2 will be all women, and verse 4 will be all men. Please stand as you are able and join in. Hey, us feet. <laughs> And his kingdom will have no end. 
We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. United as one body of Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. We pray for the church, strengthen Bishops Eaton and Thomas Greifeld, all pastors and deacons, especially our congregations in Janesville, and all leading our people in ministry with your poured out spirit, making us bold and proclaiming your reign of mercy and justice. Lord, in your mercy. For the nations, guide the newly inaugurated Governor Evers of Wisconsin, our legislature, our nation's Congress and President toward the well-being of all in their care. Shelter Barron County, Nairobi, Syria, and Zimbabwe, whose resources and abundance are threatened by violence, showing us the way of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those in need, all facing a scarcity of resources, struggling with debt and suffering with chronic pain, grieving, and all ill whom we name aloud. Jan, Catherine, Kevin, Pat, Richard, Vincent, Roseanne. and silently. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For this assembly, Transform and fill us with your life as we support our call committee studying and discerning the power and presence of the Holy Spirit in calling our next pastor as you pour us out in serving our neighbors at Adams School. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember those who have died in faith. Martin Luther King, Jr., Bill, Marilyn, Cynthia, Joyce, and the father of Sarah Lemke. With these and others, Inspire us by their witness and unite us in the eternal light of your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and fill us with the radiance of your life, your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Share Christ's peace. As the kids are coming back in, uh, grab your quarters and bring them on up. It's time for the quarter pole song.
Your beauty shines forth from the manger, and your love flows from the cross. As you gather around these signs of your love come among us, warm us to extend your care among the hungry and all in need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In thanksgiving, blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the salvation you have granted to us through Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, the child of Mary, the light of the world, our Emmanuel. Send the Spirit of your Son into our hearts, that as your beloved children we may welcome our Savior, who comes to us in his body and blood. We pray. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given to you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. United in our shared baptism, welcome to Holy Communion. Please be seated.
in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus. About the break of day, give me Jesus. Dark midnight was my cry, give me Jesus. You may all have the rest, give me Jesus. The God of glory dwell in you richly, name you beloved, and shine brightly on your path. And the blessing of a mighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs> Christ is your light. Peace be to God.